The opinions and views expressed in the following video are for entertainment purposes only. They do not reflect the views of Twin Galaxies, Persistent Productions, or any of its affiliates. Welcome everybody to the Twin Galaxy Show episode 14. I got the 14? handheld mic today. Yeah, nice. Awesome. Where'd you get that thing? Um, the Smithsonian? Isn't it 24? It's actually from the basement because I, I broke my microphone. Isn't it episode 24? Yeah, I said 24. You said 14. You said 14. It's 24. 24. Okay. Episode 24. It's episode 24. Yeah. We're adding 10 to everything today. Let's give her <laughs> episode 24, give or take 10. Yeah. <laughs> Plus minus on Plus that. Plus minus. 10. But you know but um you know what you know what might get me a new microphone? What? If like the Twin Galaxy show won a prestigious award. Oh. If you guys haven't noticed, happen? we've been Facebooking multiple times just campaigning for you guys to vote for us for the podcast award, the annual 7th annual podcast awards. We actually got nominated, which we were a little bit shocked, but then we watched our show again, and it was like, like "Oh, duh!" We're like, "Twin Galaxy show is awesome." We're, mod- we're in the modesty category. Yeah, <laughs> word. We're in a. <laughs> we are in the best video <laughs> podcast. So uh, go to a podcastawards.com. You have till October twenty seventh. Uh, you can vote once a day, so please do. If you, especially if you want the show to stay on the air, you know, you know, not not to put any guilt on you, but <laughs> yeah. just yeah. a little bit. For sure. I mean, but vote for us. It's an honor just to be nominated, Mm -hmm. but it would rock our socks off if we won. So we need your help. They were up against some big boys, too. We are. We are. (laughs) We're up against some really good shows. Ours is better, but yeah, we're up against some good shows. Yeah, we got. But don't vote for our name on the other ones. Oh, yeah. You can you can watch those shows if you want, but don't don't vote for them. Vote, vote for us. Yeah, there's some good shows on there. You're already watching Mm -hmm. them. That's all the reward they need. Yeah. Exactly. Hey, watch underdog, them, watch us. The underdog has been known to win. Yeah. Mm-hmm. The Chris Rock show won one year in the Emmys, and it was like, they did like nine episodes a year opposed to the other guys that did like 200, and they won, and hey, it was like, that might be how awesome. is that possible? We, but we do 12 episodes a year. Sure. Exactly. The other ones do weekly shows, 52. That, that show's still growing strong, right? No, yeah. Rock show? <laughs> <laughs> hey, do you remember what Chris Rock said when he won? He said Conan's got the best show. He did. Neither of them are on. <laughs> <laughs> Conan's on. Well, he's on. He's just cable. He's on the third, his third installment of the show. Well, we got a lot in store for you, uh, so we're going to get right to it. We're going to be real excited for November 11th and 13th as the Twin Galaxies will be selling 30th anniversary of of Twin Galaxies, thanks to Walter. And uh, we're going to have a lot of festivities going on. We are going to have the Iron Man cast contest. This is mm-hmm. the second time it's ever happened. We're from November 10th through November 13th. There's going to be marathons of arcade gamers playing games for 48, 72, maybe 96 hours. You think Joel West can pull off 96 hours? I don't know. I don't know. It's possible. I, well, I don't know if it's <clears> possible <throat> or not. I do know this, though. If it's possible for anyone, he can do it. it's possible for Joel West. That guy is the most serious marathoner I've ever personally witnessed. I know there's yeah. a lot of serious marathoners. And, and we got a world record to read of his later yes. trying for Amazing. that that's, magical number. That's Spoiler. a long time. Spoiler alert. Mm-hmm. Well, you can watch Joel West in action at the Twin Galaxies Festival. He'll be yes. playing Frenzy. He'll be going for maybe 100 hours. We'll see. That's insane. Well, he's going go to go for a personal record. That, that has never been done. Can I do the Iron Man competition where I just take a piece of shrapnel in my heart and have to build an electromagnet? <laughs> That's exactly what I was thinking. To keep thinking. myself alive? I think that would be easier for me. <laughs> that would be easier than what some of these guys are going to try to attempt. Um, that, and this is so much fun to watch, too. Oh, yeah. I mean, this is <clears> really <throat> why people really need to be down at this event because I've I've got to witness this a few times with these people trying to attempt these marathon world records. It might sound boring to you. It is not boring. It, it might be boring for the gamer. I'm not, yeah. I'm not certain it's not boring for the gamer. I don't know how they do it. But being at these events when you have guys trying to marathon these games for 40, 50, 60 hours, it's it's really intense. It's really fun. And hey, you don't have to stare at the screen for 50 hours. You get to go, you know, <laughs> you get to go watch them and then go eat some pizza and come back and you watch come back them the next morning. Yeah, yeah. Oh, 
you yeah, know, play 12 uh, more hours. You, know, you get to go to bed. Yeah. <laughs> the, the, the event closes down. <clears throat> you, you know, go to the bar. You have a few pops. You, you go to bed. You come back the next morning. Yeah. You have some breakfast. You, he's still playing. They're, they never st- It's amazing. And it's we got amazing, a list of uh, a few guys who are confirmed playing, but there still may be more. Mm-hmm. Uh, Joel West is doing Frenzy. Uh, Richie Knuckles is doing Space Invaders. I don't know if it's going to be quite as long as Joel's uh, attempt. Uh, Rick, Car- uh, Rick Carter is going to do uh, Nibbler. Oh. We just got oh, the world record very cool. beating Tim McVeigh. Oh, Tim wow. McVeigh will be playing Nibbler as well, so it'll be kind of a head-to-head marathon. That's kind of cool. That is Probably pushing cool. each other a little bit further. They might go forever. Those guys are amazing at that game. Oh, Both yeah. Both of them, and that is such a difficult game. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah George Lutz is going to be going for the Qbert world record. He's tried multiple times this year. Mm-hmm. Um, he'll be going for it. And David Cruz, the world record holder on Tron, um, he'll be going for an either – Longer marathon. I think they're just trying to see who can go the longest. Um, so it's going to be a lot of fun. There's going to be a couple more people um, unannounced yet or unconfirmed at this point. Um, also at the Twin Galaxies Festival, we're going to have our trading cards for sale initially. Yes. The first time you can buy the Twin Galaxies Very trading cool. card. As of right now, there's 103. There will be 103 cards available. Dang. If, they were stu- if today was the festival. But there's going to be more. Is that including the Adam, ja- Adam Jacobowitz hologram card? or No, that, that's a special set. Oh. Is that a Chase variant? Awesome. Yes. We, um, you've, Eugene, I want one. Oh, do you? I want one so bad. Do you want a uh, Eugene Jarvis card? That'd be cool. Well, that's that's added to the set just oh. recently. Ooh, Ralph Bear. Cool. And oh. Bobby Wilson also is going to be very part of the set. We, cool. I mean, we'll be here... If I name all 103, we'll be here all night. I was going to so, say. Yeah. 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 Let's, let's very, not do that. Yeah, let's not do it. So be at the festival. Take a look at them. Purchase them. <clears> get them <throat> signed by all the superstars at the Twin Galaxies Festival. It's going to be great. Or by us. We'll be there. Yeah, yeah, for sure. I'll sign whichever card you put yeah, in front of me. Too. I don't care who it is. <laughs> yeah, um, I'll sign. Nolan Ryan. Sure. You better not sign that Adam Jacobowitz one, though. That's that true. is for one man and one man alone. That's, that's true. true. That's so. true. That's that would bring down the value significantly. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Of it too. Oh, no, but like you, you got your, uh, got your Justin Verlander cards. Yeah, bring them in. I'll sign them. <laughs> I'll sign them. <laughs> I'll sign them. <laughs> um, also, uh, at the Twin Galaxies will be the Twin Galaxies World Championship. You're, you know what? First time you don't you don't have to. You know, send a tape in or, uh, you mm-hmm. know, get a referee to be your buddy and come to your house and watch you play video games. You can come to the Twin Galaxies Festival and get verified right on the spot. And you could be a world record holder. Um, Very cool. Uh, four brand new games. So we got awesome. Modern Warfare 3 is going to be available at the Twin Galaxies uh, mm. Championship. Four is a four. Um, <coughs> Just Dance 3. Rock Band 3. A lot of threes and fours. What's this, this year? year? If you're playing a video game. Then Chances yeah. are it has a three in it. No three. kidding. <laughs> uh, NBA Jam will be another one. Dance Central 2. Awesome. Maybe three. No, no that would be nice. Super year. excited about Dance Central uh, 2. GoldenEye 007 for the Wii, not the oh, N64, cool. which very is a cool. very cool game. Uh, we Play Motion, which is a great game. Oh. If you haven't picked it up, you get another free controller. Yeah. I love games like that. When you get a free controller for the same price, mm-hmm. it's awesome. Uh, it's, it's beautiful. It's really getting a free game. Yeah, you are. It's really, yeah. which is cool. Uh, Street Fighter 4 Arcade Edition for the Xbox 360, Portal 2, um, Dead Space Extraction, Oh. Um, Pac-Man uh, Championship Edition will be on PlayStation 3, because um, cool. we've had a lot of competition on the Xbox. Mm-hmm. We've had a couple mm-hmm. scores for the PlayStation 3, but we're looking for some more scores yeah. with a different controller. Might it's a well. lot different to play with that yeah. controller. Um, what am I missing? Gears of War 3 will also be at the Twin Galaxies Very World cool. Championship. And uh, Gunstringer will be another one. Very so cool. Lots awesome of titles to set world records on at the Twin Galaxies Festival. Um, are you guys excited? It, yeah, yeah. yeah. And most importantly, at the Twin Galaxies Festival, you get to see Mike and I. Yeah, friendship. <laughs> We're going to be there. Say. We're going to be there. We're going to be rocking with you guys the entire time. We'll be tearing it up on the streets of Atomwa, my home away from home. <laughs> I love it there. Yep. It, it is awesome. So come I mean, down there. The mayor gave you the key to the city. We might as yeah. well go back. Exactly. That's true. He's going to say, just walk up. Say, hey, Josh, what's up? <clears throat> where should we hang out? Right here. That's where we should hang out. Hold hold your right hand up. You get to shake that thing. Mm-hmm. It's true. Look at that. It's so pretty. All five digits. Sanitizer will be provided as well. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> Bright, it's just bright cleaner. It just stings for a minute. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, it's, it's worth it's it. Trust me. Yeah. Bring your own hand sanitizer. Oh, yeah. I don't, I don't touch this stuff myself. Yeah. Well, Josh is going to be there, but if you do, if if you still need more gaming, 
Uh, there is going to be a contest similar to 1983 that Twin Galaxies did. It's, it's going to be called this time the Twin Galaxies Gauntlet. Oh, cool. Basically, it's going to be similar to That's Incredible, okay. where you get a certain amount of time, and you have to go from game to game. And you don't oh, shoot good. a food. Yeah, I was worried yeah, about I was that. Say, well, when do you play two or three? Two. Wizard about to die. Two. Ooh, okay. Gauntlet might be a game. We won't know. Yeah. It might be a part of the t- Twin Galaxies Gauntlet, but we're not releasing any games until the contest. Awesome. So it's a blind competition. Show part. off your true skill at the Twin Galaxies Gauntlet. It's going to be... A, What's so funny? Am I awesome? No, you're tearing it up, bro. I didn't oh, do okay. anything. Don't worry. Don't oh, worry. Well, it looks like you're praying over there, like you're gonna get first place or something. Well, see, that, that, that is what. Yeah, if I was, an yeah, it would be a part of him getting a place. Ain't no chance of that happening. Uh, competition <laughs> will go on all day Friday and Saturday, and then uh, there'll be heats between players, and then uh, Saturday night we'll have one final four-player race. To, to crown the grand champion of the 2011 TG Gauntlet. So cool. it'll be like the TV show. Mm-hmm. Like, you know, four, awesome. Instead of three players, it'll be four players trying to race to the end to get specific you know, milestones on milestones, games. Like yeah. like the NES championship had. Right. I believe you had to get 50,000. Right. Mar- I don't know the numbers. Like collect 30 know. coins or whatever. Yeah, exactly. Move on the NES shape. championship, you had to get 50 coins on Super Mario Brothers. Thank you. Then the Red first Racer. lap on Rad Racer, and then yep. you played Tetris, Tetris until much. you lost. Yeah, so... It ain't going to be that. It's going to be our own version. Better. So stronger. you're going to show up, try to win. There'll be some prizes included, okay, of course. So. Don't forget the Twin Galaxies Film Festival will be going on throughout the entire weekend. It's yep. just going to be great. There's going to be, well, for one thing, Our Day with Walter Day will be playing. Awesome. That's right. And the DVD will be for sale, mm-hmm. as long as a lot of Twin Galaxies t-shirts designed by Walter Day and the event t-shirt, which you can get at the front door, which will be pretty cool. So get Our Day with Walter Day, and I uh, can get it signed by Walter, too. Very cool. uh, other movies will be uh, Dr. Kong, the short oh, 16, yes. about Hank Chen, uh, basically... I guess a sequel to King of Kong to show what to update you on it's the like Donkey spin-off. Kong. Sure, yeah, yeah. Spin a, a it supplemental is. sequel. Yeah. Exactly. And the really the the most important part about Doctor Kong, I mean, it's really awesome. You know what Hank Chen did, what he accomplished. But the best part is, Nick and I are in it. Yeah. So <laughs> that's true. I know. For oh, you the know, podcast guys for are one really second. <laughs> and of course, unlike Doctor Mario, Doctor Kong is a real doctor. Yeah. Yes. That's true. That is true. That's true. That is garbage that, doc, he, that he was calling himself Doctor in that game. Yeah. yeah. I mean, does That's why Mar- I refuse to play. Does Mario have, like, a Ph.D. at least in something? I don't. I mean, is, is I he like doubt a, it. I mean, does he have, like, He's a, a doctorate in, like, plumbing studies? I think he has a doctorate in pipe yeah. fitting. I think we can yeah. safely assume. You, you don't know that, sir. Yeah, maybe a Ph.D. in B.S. <laughs> But anyway, the Twin Galaxies Film Festival. Yeah, there's yeah. going to be, there's gonna be a ton of films. Go to our website, videogamecapitaltheworld.com, to see all the ones I'll be playing during the day. And uh, there's, there's going to be a Kong Off documentary, cool. too, about the actual there Kong is. Off that was there in March. Is. I mean, you've watched our March episode. A very so cool yeah. documentary. It's very about cool. The Kong off. Um, also, Bonus Life Extended Play yep. will be featured. Not shown yet. It's not yeah. finished, but a trailer. Bonus Life Extended Play trailers, videos. Produced and by the uh, company that makes this podcast correct, available correct. to you. Yeah. Correct. There will be representative persistent productions there that you can talk to and uh, get the inside scoop on that. And this may, no promises, but this this actually could be your last chance to be in Bonus Life Extended Play in the background somewhere mm-hmm. in yeah. this film. This is going to be a great film you know, showcasing the industry. This True. could be your last chance to, you know, yep. throw up a peace sign in the back or, uh, <laughs> yeah. you know, Vomit, jack, you know, jack like a thumbs up somewhere, or you know, somewhere or in there. Super system yeah, up. Last chance. Super system up, yeah. yeah. Just so who souped up some world records this month? Ooh, there were some, Man. there are some hefty world records no this kidding. month. Campbell. Some major arcade world records. For the arcade, we gave the teaser earlier, Frenzy points. 4,933,702 points by Joel West, the man we were talking about, the marathon man himself from Gastonia, North Carolina, USA. That is a lot of points. That is, that a, is a lot of points on wow. that game. Also for the arcade, make tracks. People are bridging the gap. This is Walter Day's old record. Make tracks 2,374,790 by Mr. Mappy himself, Greg Bond from Hillsboro. Cool. 
Very cool record. Congrats, Sam. Nice. Also, for the Nintendo Wii, uh, Wii Play Fishing points, 3,220 from Kevin Connor. <clears throat> and for also for the Wii, Super Smash Bros. Brawl Stadium Multi-Man Endless Brawl Kills, 525 kills by Andrew D. Fur. Fur, right? Fur. Fur. By Andrew D. Fur from Wauwatosa, Wisconsin. Uh, for the arcade, Nibbler, Marathon, points, this record's ridiculous, 1,000,000, 222,360 by Rick Carter of Glen Burnie, Maryland. It's a billion points on that Yeah, game. it's kind yep. of ridiculous. He, he only beat the, he, but he only beat the world record by 2,222,360 points. So. Tim McVeigh's world record of 27 years is finally beaten. The yes. fact that you can say a billion points in a video game. I mean, most of them end at 99999. Nine, nine, nine. I mean, that's usually less. They see a billion is kind of crazy. This is one of the most coveted world records oh, out yeah. there for yep. any genre, oh, God, any yeah. platform. Mm-hmm. This record stood for a long time. Tim McVeigh still to this day is <clears throat> amazing yep. nibbler player for someone to beat him and and don't don't count tim mcveigh out on this either yeah no. uh, he'll, he'll be right back on yes well they're gonna go for it at the twin galaxies festival tim mcveigh and rick carter are gonna be playing next it's to so each awesome. other playing nibbler mm-hmm. it's so, one of the most exciting things so going y- on. you know that world record might not last that long we'll see also for the nes defender 2 points 1,362,400 by again Andrew D. Fuhrer of Wauwatoosa, Wisconsin. Wauwatoosa? <laughs> Tootsa. That's Wauwatoosa. Oh, Wauwatoosa. Wow- Wauwatoosa. Wow- <laughs> Hell yeah, kind of maybe a little armpit action here. That, that's what goes on, and that's the only record being broken in Wauwatoosa. <laughs> oh, you got some more? <laughs> <laughs> for Nintendo sorry. Wii, Bubble Bobble Plus, one player arranged points, 1,327,890 from Brian Mundo. Mundo. From Paradise. Oh. He's from Paradise. That's awesome. Boston Paradise? No, just Paradise. Oh, okay. Return of the Jedi for the arcade. Tournament settings, 2,193,000 points from Hector T. Rodriguez oh, in California. Okay. New, nice. world, new world record. I think we got one more world record. Yes, Stanley Lowski from Rockford, Illinois, home of the Peaches. Yep. Golf, hitting the green, zero feet. This is a perfect yeah, score. American this score cannot be beaten. Are you singing the yeah. League of Their Own song? Yeah, I'm a fan from of the Rockford. Team. I'm a huge fan of that team. I'm a fan of the world record. Yes, yeah, so this is a great world record. This is a perfect score. This score cannot be beaten. It yep. can be tied. You can get second place by yeah. tying this score. But this score cannot be beat. Well, we're on the phone with two NES champions, and uh, I felt the need to talk about NES because I see that on the boards all the time. Mm-hmm. I see new world records for NES, and uh, we see world records for arcade. Arcade's popular in the Twin Galaxies board. But mm-hmm. other than that, it's NES and arcade. So we're talking about sure. NES a little bit. You know, we want people to say, Nintendo Wii's been getting some love, like it, we've been talking has. about. It but has. Um, there seems to be a special feel about NES. Like, people it will does. submit scores for fourth place and fifth place. You know, a lot of gamers, they're going to send a score in unless they're first place. Mm-hmm. But for the NES, I don't know, there's something magical about it. And we're going to talk to uh, Rudy Freddy and Tom Votava, NES champions across the board, multiple world records. Well, of you know, it seems to me, Mike, that. The arcade might be some of the most coveted records mm-hmm. for Twin Galaxies, but I would say it seems to me that NES is the most coveted of all the console records. Of systems. Of systems, yeah. Of, of consoles, for sure. But that's why we got these two on the phone, right? Yeah. No doubt. Now, did did you two intentionally decide to compete you know, almost solely on the NES platform, or do you compete on all the platforms and NES just happens to be... Where you found the most success, or or just your favorite, or the ones you feel like sending in. Um, who wants to go first? <laughs> yeah, that's, that's what I was Rudy, go ahead. <laughs> um, honestly, uh, you know, I came into Twin Galaxies, I believe, in like 2002, 2003, and um, you know, I didn't even think about the platforms. I just saw a couple of scores, and I decided to start submitting. I was like, well, I could tie that. I could beat that. Um, it led into the NES, but NES was not my first choice when I came into Twin Galaxies, I can tell you that much. 
How about yeah, you, Tom? Me, I would say that uh, most of uh, my favorite games happen to be from the NES. I think uh, if you looked at my collection at the time, I probably had about uh, 100 plus games in that system and no more than 20 for anything else. So it just made it an obvious choice for me just because uh, every game that I liked just happened to be there. Dang, you have 100. Name name your favorite 50 right now. <laughs> <laughs> Let's see. Castlevania's all done. <laughs> you guys do have, you two both have records on other systems too as well, right? Right. right. Yep. Yeah. Indeed. Um, mostly uh, for other systems, I would say Super Nintendo, but I have a couple of arcade scores, Nintendo 64, etc. Excellent. How about you, Rudy? I think I think that uh, the reason most of my scores were on the NES and why I think NES is so popular, though, now I think about what you were asking. Um, I think NES is the first type of system of its kind. Uh, it had so many titles, but everything was very versatile. And every game that you play has a uniqueness to it you know every game is like an adventure in itself you know there there's nothing there's no other system like the nes because the games that were invented they don't make any games like that before and they don't make any games like it today you know what i'm saying mm -hmm. so um i have quite a few scores on the nes um i particularly go for oddball titles though obviously <laughs> as you know why do you two think you found so much success on this particular platform let's start with tom um well, for starters, I suppose it's because uh, there wasn't too many scores out there when I first started. <laughs> I was basically playing for first place against nobody. <laughs> and Thank eventually you, it became more competitive when other people joined on. But uh, when I first joined uh, 10 years ago, there wasn't too many NES scores. And I just kind of set out to just put something up on a lot of them. Rudy? Um, I think I had a lot of success. I started you know, gaming when I was six, and uh, I didn't get as good as I was, you know, I didn't get, I kept getting better every year, you know, year after year, but I didn't get good until probably around 2002, 2003. And I think I've had so much success in that, you know, with the heart and soul and the passion that I have for gaming. And I just put, you know, all my passion, heart and soul into the NES and uh, be honest with you, you know, Tom Vitaba was one of the reasons why I got so serious on competing with the NES, uh, trying to catch him over the years. <laughs> yep. We, we've talked about how NES is obviously one of the most popular platforms for record submissions, but why do you guys think that is? Do you think it's because the games are so good, or do you think it's because so many people still own the games and they work, or maybe some other reason? What do you guys think? Rudy. Well, <laughs> I'm sorry, I didn't mean to interrupt you. Uh -huh. <laughs> Go for it. Um, I think I think that uh, NES, uh, like I said, you know, NES was the first system of its kind. You know, after Atari and all that, NES came to to boot. You know, almost put basically all the Atari, you know, gaming companies and stuff. You know, in a, in a video game crash, basically right after you know '84. You know, when '85 and '86 hit, when the NES came out with Mike Tyson's Punch Out and everything, a lot of us, including the people that play now, the generation that we play, like Tom Batava, myself, Andrew Ferrier, and other people, that's what we played when we were little kids. So. You know, that's all we knew. And uh, I think that's why it's so popular, because the Nintendo at the time was just the biggest thing going. Just the biggest thing going. I would second most of that as well. Um, probably the other thing I would throw in is that uh, as far as older games are concerned, things that have stood the test of time in video games, other than the arcade machines, I think the NES is pretty much the best out of everything that has come out. I mean, the Atari's been around longer, some of those older systems as well, uh, ColecoVision, etc. But none of them really caught on. They were never this popular. And so that's why even today, uh, the best games for the NES keep on getting replicated on Game Boy Advance or Wii Virtual Console. Uh, even today, I just looked it up. Uh, I think the most Virtual Console games that have been created by one platform have been NES games. Um, I do have to ask, though, what out of all the records you made, what was the most fun? Uh, what game was the most fun to make your attempt at? I mean, what's your favorite game? I guess out of all the ones you have records on, uh, Tom. Yeah. Um, probably my favorite. I'd have to go with Legend of Zelda, doing speed runs. Um, the, there's so much involved with that. I mean, I know it's not one of my current records, but it was one of my first, and it just uh, I just remember figuring out a path uh, to finish that game quickly. Uh, was extremely interesting to me. There's all sorts of possibilities. Uh, I really like doing all the timing and the test uh, test variations of what kind of plan you do. And uh, this, I just looked at it and said, okay, I think I had more fun 
planning it out than I had actually running the game. I could see that. How about you, Rudy? Um, I think one of my most, you know, enjoyable scores was to make, and like it's going to be funny when I say this because the game is so friggin' hard. <laughs> um, probably a Nightmare on Elm Street because I was such a big fan of the movies, and when I remember first playing that game when it first came out, and I couldn't even get like a hundred thousand points, and I had to like use all my continues to play, and now I could beat the whole game without even continuing. <laughs> so it was kind of enjoyable. Um, did you see the uh, new Freddy Krueger movie? I did, I did, and uh, I'm going to tell you right now, the retro is 20,000 oh times better. Always that new one was a flaming turd, wasn't it? <laughs> I couldn't. I couldn't stand it, man. I, I mean, how do you compare? You know, it's just some things sometimes they're new are better than the old, but for the most part, no. No, and then Rorschach as Freddy? Just, no, thank you. It's horrible. <laughs> I know. Anybody I was gonna say, it sounded like he just played Rorschach. Again. Yeah, it was. It was somebody took a dump on a camera. <laughs> <laughs> and Tom, I gotta ask you too. If you could give it all up, all the records, everything in your life, to wake up tomorrow morning and be Link, would you do it? Uh, and wake up in the morning. And, and you're, you're Link. You're no longer Tom Votava. You are Link. You you live in Hyrule. <laughs> You have the magic sword. You are Link. Funny. Would you give um, it all up? If I could do that, would I do it? Um, I don't know. I, I generally like my life as it is. I'd just use the game's diversion. So waking up in the Hyrule, that actually would be some sort of twisted dream. Right on, right on. That's so a you'll, good you'll, answer. It is a good answer. You'll, you'll stay Tom Votava, and you'll yeah. you'll pretend you're Link on the game like the rest of us right. do. I'm, have you seen an Octorok, man? It's good call. It's not something you see. <laughs> <laughs> you're just always chasing after this princess that you don't even do. You even like her? I mean, that's, that's why I was thinking of you, Mario too. I'm like, does he even like this he, girl? He I hasn't mean, met her. Exactly. She's been captured his entire existence. Like she's been with Koopa more than she's <laughs> been with him. Like I wouldn't be surprised if he ended up with Koopa at the end. Really. Yeah. I like has the that syndrome they talk about in Die Hard. What, <laughs> do you call that when Stockholm yeah Stockholm, Stockholm syndrome, syndrome yeah. where yeah she wants to go back and hang out with the Hammer Brothers and stuff. She like goes and visits the Fire Brothers in jail. Yeah, that's right. The beginning of every yeah. game, she's like, no, no, don't kidnap yeah, me. Don't oh. kidnap me. I want to stay here and live with this plumber. <laughs> he smells like feces and <laughs> dresses in overalls. <laughs> Sorry, poor, poor Mario. Uh, yeah. We digress. Uh, <laughs> what what to you is your guys, what is the holy grail of NES records? If you could only have one record and you know no one's ever going to beat it, what what to you is the most coveted N NES record? Go ahead, Rudy. I would say the most, it's, it doesn't exist and who knows if it will ever exist and I'm going to try for it one day and probably, Tom, you're going to laugh because it's not, it's probably nobody could do it in the world. I think the most amazing and most famous record to have of all time because I don't think it's even doable would be to get 999999 on elevator action for the NES. I mean, you get that, nobody's touching that. That's I mean, beautiful right. answer. How about you, Tom? Um like uh holy grail of the score that we've set or just something in general just, that we think is important. Just the one score you wish you could have. The one score. Maybe you do have it already. But the the one score that you think is the most coveted of all NES records that is you get the most street cred, the most screen cred for screen cred, yeah. out of any NES record. Honestly, it, I think it just shows in the number of submissions, but it's probably NES Tetris. Anybody that can put up a uh, maximum score on that one. There's just uh, been so many submissions on that. A lot of people trying to play level 19 as best as they can. Uh, most of us just getting to that point, and that's when we die. Yeah. And uh, I just looked at that and said, okay, people really want that score more than anything else. And, and level 18 is that much easier than level 19. I mean, uh, just, just in case some people that are watching, listening, don't understand, I mean, 18 is like cake compared to 19. Once you get to 19, it's like you can't even control the blocks. So like I said before, that's an amazing score in itself. But like you said about, you know, to me, each record in itself is special. So when you asked me, like, what would be the Holy Grail when I mentioned that one score for Elevator Action, I'd say every score that 
both me and Tom have put up, and I'm sure Tom will agree. You know, they're all special in themselves. You know, depending on what time of the day we did it, what the reasoning was behind it, the date, the time, you know, all that stuff. I think it all factors in. So you think there's a not just a quality, but a quantity thing. You know, thing that's important too. It's it's a a good mix of quantity and quality that gets you the true screen yeah. cred. Well, yeah, you know, to be the first ever to max out a score, you know, on a certain game or to do it on a certain holiday, like, you know, I did Home Alone, you know, during Christmas time, you know, things like that. You know, I think it's, I think sometimes I like to do crazy things on crazy holidays. So I just think everything's special in itself, you know. Okay. Kind of in the same vein, I have to ask you, what is your one uh, dessert island game? <laughs> 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 That's an inside joke with out, us like, right now. I'm sorry. <laughs> no, it's stranded desert island. What's the game you're taking? Only one choice. And you don't have internet oh. or mail, so this, you're not sending in a score. You just there's only you only get one game <laughs> so that you get to play for. So your life sucks because yeah. Twin Galaxies is gone. But you, <laughs> but oh, you yeah. do yeah. have. <laughs> there is one power, but yeah, there's yeah. a plug in a tree. <laughs> yeah. And, and a cake. Okay. There's a cake there too. Okay. Um, probably for me, uh, and this I know it's kind of deviates from the whole NES concept, but uh, probably Arcade Mario Bros. Oh, okay. oh. is my Desert Island game. It's because that game never gets old. There's always something different that surprises me every time I play it. And I can't say that about too many games, quite honestly. There's a lot of them out there that there's a pattern, and you learn what the pattern is. Uh, sometimes it takes a long time to figure out that pattern, but once you get it, you've got it. Uh, Mario Brothers just isn't that game, and that's what I love about it. How about you, Rudy? <sighs> You're going to put me on an island with a game of choice. I mean, so many, of course, I could sit here all night and tell you at least five. Ten, I know it's got to be one, um, honestly, and it's not even, you know, one of my favorite games. Probably Viagra's Tactical Gladiator for TurboGrafx-16 due to the fact that, number one, I've never finished it awesome. fully. And two, I just that game doesn't get boring. That's a very cool game. You know, I never thought about that. Picking a game you've never beaten is actually a good idea. <laughs> Instead of just picking Contra or whatever, they, you know, wipe out that's, 20 That would be your game. Though, of right? course that's my game, but I mean, I'm just saying. Right? It's the only, oh, my and, and I, the only game he's good at. I don't have... <laughs> no, he's not yeah, that good. I don't have... <laughs> Are you guys currently working on any uh, world records? Any big ones? Rudy, you go ahead. You can start that one. Well, I, I just did Contra for the NES the other night. I haven't publicized it yet on YouTube or anything, so I maxed that score out. That was not easy. I mean, the game's not hard, but the repetitiveness and to have the willpower to do it for hours, you know, is really rough. And gotcha for the NES is what I'm working on, which I'm getting my butt kicked every <laughs> night. So, <laughs> What about you, Tom? Um, uh, I think that... Uh, this doesn't quite count as a world record, but I'm trying to reach the kill screen on NES Donkey Kong. Very cool. Um, there's 133 levels in the game. Uh, you have to do the barrel left stage, the elevator, and the rivets three times each to do it. And it's a really long game. You only have four men to do it, and it's very taxing, to say the least, trying to get all the way through that. Um, I've come close several times. Uh, the closest, I think, would be level 127. Dang. And uh, in the process, I can break my record score. That's not the issue. But I just want to reach that kill screen and be able to just say that it's been done. Very cool. Very cool accolade. No, if, that's good. There, there seems to be something. The NES is my favorite system as well, you guys. I'm not, I don't have quite the, uh, the screen cred you guys do on it. But it's my favorite system as well. But there's something strange, in my opinion anyway. Tell me if this is just me, about the NES where... It really can be the most aggravating video game system ever created, in my opinion. It'll tell me, have you guys ever physically broken a controller and or an NES game? I mean, like, like crushed TV. the yeah. controller in your hand or, or popped a game out. Chucked it. And, and chucked that thing right against the wall in your basement. I mean, just chucked it till it broke into a million pieces. Is that something you guys have ever done? I mean, he's yes. <laughs> Tom, you want to go first on this one? Because I have a story to tell. <laughs> All right, we'll, we'll save you best for last then. Uh, this, uh, 
For me, no, I can honestly say I've never broken any NES equipment from anger, but I've come close a couple times. Uh, when I was younger as a kid, I'm sure I've spiked a couple of controllers that I'd like to have back. <laughs> but, uh, they still work amazingly. So. <laughs> nothing, yeah, it's hard broken. to kill those things, man. I've tried desperately, and mm -hmm. they just always survive. It drives me nuts. How about you, Rudy? Yeah, I don't remember. Well, I don't know if it was ever broken totally per se, but I've come pretty close. Um, I will tell you a quick story. It wasn't the NES. It was the Super NES. I could have lied and said it was the NES, but I figured I'd be honest. It was the Super NES, and I was playing um, a game, and I was about to get the world record. Not only that, I got to the final end of the game with all my lives intact. And somehow, some way, I failed and lost all my guys on the last stage, which, which happens once in a while. I mean, I think if anybody can get to the end of any game is, you know, special in itself. I mean, I don't have many games I cannot get to the final. You know, I might lose, but at least I can get there. And um, I lost all nine guys, took the controller, threw it in the other room, and also put a glass inside a bag and smashed it in the other room and then came back, beat the game, and got the world record. <laughs> I love the sound of breaking glass. That's awesome. <laughs> Mazel tov. Mazel tov. Like, Mazel tov. World record. <laughs> okay, so. In case record emergency, break glass. So, right. so now we know your secret, though. I mean, <laughs> there's going to be people trying this after they watch this show. There's going to be people who are like, oh, I can't nice quite sound. get this record. I'm, I'm going to break some glass. I'm going to go punch a window. <laughs> This is kids, don't try this at home. Or at least put it in the bag first, <laughs> like Brody told you to. Put it in a burlap sack. Yeah, put it in a Ziploc bag. <laughs> okay, so before the show, we had uh, Rudy and Tom come up with five questions each to ask each other. Uh, Tom, you go first. <laughs> I'm... Question number one. <laughs> oh, that's right. That was... Sorry. Yeah, we, oh, we didn't do that. We, didn't, we forgot to do that. I'm sorry, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> do do you guys have any questions of each other? Now that <laughs> we've brought it up. Now that you brought it up, um, now you pretty got you guys did a good job of coming up with a good set of questions here. I'm trying to figure we out. Did. What, we did a what good job. I'm curious about it. We'll leave that part in. You have any questions for us? <laughs> Um, what do you guys do when you're not? We live the here. Show? This is what we do. We do this 24 hours a day. We, <laughs> yeah, we do. It, it kind of seems like this it. This Neo anyway. Geo is just worn out back here. Yeah, I mean, we, uh, you know, I've, I've, we, we host do, what like four podcasts, right? Something like, like that. Like yeah. Nick yes. and I are on uh, constant four or five podcast. different <laughs> shows. Um, you know, making movies, doing <laughs> shows. We we actually do two podcasts a day. We just only release one a month. <laughs> we do do a couple live shows. We do, you know, uh, Tuesday, Tuesday night, Wednesday night. Yeah. We do the uh, Twin Galaxies live show. We do this show, so uh, we 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 keep pretty busy. We're, and we d we're all workaholics I, anyway. So I, I I do have a question actually ooh, for Tom. Ooh. Actually, it's a good question. Um, about eight years ago, when I first came into Twin Galaxy, whatever it was, eight or ten years ago, I I, talk, I had a talk with Todd Rogers years back, and um, we talked about you know forming something with like all around gaming which you guys have known that you've heard on blogs and heard my complaints about how I see it and how it should be but I have the question for Tom Tom as an elite NES player like myself obviously you probably being the greatest right now of all time NES you know world record holder overall um, do you share any of my visions of seeing an all around gaming league sometime in the near future and do you agree or disagree and understand where I'm coming from when I feel that because we're such elite players and just like any other sports athletes, you know, that we should get paid for all that we do. And it's unfair due to the fact that other people are getting paid, you know, to go eat sandwiches at diners, drives ins and dives. And me and you are sitting home playing these systems and we're the best in the world at what we do. No, um, it's a nice little vision. Uh, I don't know exactly what it would take to get to reality. I guess I've always just thought of this as just a hobby. Even with everything that I do, it's really, um, I mean, I work for a living, and I'm okay with that, honestly. Good. Cool. Mm -hmm. <laughs> okay. All right, man. Well, uh, thanks for coming on the show, you guys. Are, hey, this is, are, are we oh, going to oh, see? Sorry. Oh, are, I'm sorry. Go ahead. I'm, I'm sorry, Mike. Are, are we going to see uh, either of you guys at the uh, Twin Galaxies Festival in uh, November down in Atama? Um, 
Sadly, I cannot make it. Um, I'm going to be uh, with family. They're flying in exactly that weekend, so this didn't work out. How about you, Rudy? Yes, no. I'm still up in the air. I'm still up in the air. I'm going to try to make it. It just depends. Right now, with my particular job, it's really rough because I'm either on call or I have a certain amount of days per week. So I'm kind of at their mm -hmm. will. You know what I mean? So it's really rough. Um, so it's hard for me to say, well, yeah, I'm going to take this day off. You know, it's oh, yeah. it's rough. Well, we hope to see so you. I don't there. know. But uh, yeah, yeah, same here. Likewise. Yeah, definitely sounds like a good time. I hope you guys just uh, knock it out of the yeah, park. We're gonna do our fun. Walter's doing his best in his hometown, or it's not his hometown. I always say that. It's, it's like his, the sister. City, it's his isn't sister it? city of Fairfield, yeah. right? Maybe. Is it? No, they know. they border each know. other. Well, do they? That's, yeah. Couldn't you call that a sister city? No. No. Why not? <laughs> Sisters right. live next to each other on occasion. Okay. <laughs> like, their bedrooms are probably next to each other when they grow up, so, I mean, why wouldn't Fairfield and the Tumble be Sister City? Well, okay. I'm just saying. Right. We don't want to waste any more of your guys' time with this, but the thanks for coming on the show. Uh, I really appreciate it. It was yeah, a lot of fun, guys. too. And uh, uh, oh, I got one more quick question. Oh. All right. Do you get what right. system do you – do you guys play in, like, any, like, third brand – NESs, you know, like Yobos. Oh, have yeah, you been buddy. seeing oh, these yeah. around where they play the original cartridges? Aftermarket, aftermarket, newer systems. And I, I have, I have wow. them all. Um, and I gotta tell you, you know, it's kind of like, uh, how can I put this? It's kind of like what Hyundai used to be in '95. They sucked. And now they're one of the elite car makers in the country. Yobo started mm -hmm. off really slow. But I gotta tell you, their their third, fourth generation systems—they've come a long way. Of course, it'll never be like the NES. There is a differential in sound quality and color quality, but they've they've come a long way. And believe it or not, Tom, some of them play Castlevania Three now. <laughs> <laughs> There's actually some that don't. Wow, some kind of. Do, most of them don't. No, most of them don't even play Castlevania Three. Dang. No, nope, it's not an <laughs> NES. <laughs> That's true. Depending on where you buy your uh, replacement uh, pin connector from. <laughs> <laughs> nice. No, I've never tried any of those systems. The closest I've come is I bought one of the Yobo controllers and tried to plug it into a real NES, mm -hmm. and it didn't really work well. Um, I noticed it was a little bit... Uh, it was a nice idea. The cross pad was a little bit more loose, so it would help with circular movements if it worked properly. Is it, is it safe to say you guys have top-loading NESs? I do. I don't have one. Um, the closest one that I was going to get was the Retron 3. I can't use it for TG, but at least, you know, the Retron 3D, and this is really cool, Tom, really quick before we, you guys let us go. Tom, you should look into it just to have it for fun. You could play Genesis, Super NES, and Nintendo on it, and it takes our original controllers. So it's pretty cool. Very neat. It's really so, cool. Rudy, you play on the, the old-fashioned yeah. flip top, put it in there? Wow. Yep. Yep. <laughs> that's crazy. Hold on. I mean, that's that's <laughs> great, <laughs> but... <laughs> they just yeah. not always the most reliable system. Yeah. Yeah. My brother. I bet he could get. I bet he could get more. I bet he could get more world records on him. Yeah. If he so, didn't spend so much time. I mean, yeah. have you guys? This is another question, just because as much as I love the NES, this is an issue with it. Have you guys ever been? You know, you're about to get that world record. You're kicking butt on a game, and it freezes up on you. <laughs> yep. Um. I don't think that's happened, at least not for a very deep run. I mean, it's happened when you mm -hmm. first turn the game on and it's dirty, and somewhere after five minutes it freezes up maybe, but cool. nothing that's serious. I, I I don't have your luck. <laughs> no, well, he's got the top loader. Though. No, you do have a top loader. <laughs> so that's, that is, you know. Yeah, I was really lucky. Uh, yeah, all my, my other top loader, I got it from a pawn oh, shop. Awesome, like congratulations. <laughs> Beautiful. All right, well, thanks for joining us again, NES Champions, Tom Votava and Rudy Ferretti, and uh, we'll see you next time. Yep, see ya. See you guys. We appreciate it, guys. Thanks, guys. My pleasure. Thanks, that was really guys. fun. All right, we're going to see you next time in Ottumwa, Iowa, 11th through 13th at the Twin Galaxies 30th anniversary party. Yep. So uh, visit TwinGalaxies.com to get to get all the directions. It's uh, you know hotel information, everything else. We'll be right there, and uh, you'll see these two guys over there. Heck yeah, mm -hmm. we'll be there representing the Twin Galaxies podcast crew. Uh, for my host Mike Janay, Josh Hauslander, Nick Hauslander, myself, Michael Soroka, we'll see you at the Twin Galaxies 30th yep. anniversary party. We want you in a tumble. Goodbye. Yeah, see the you. Members of the Twin Galaxies show. We come from cities. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> hey, ready? <clears throat> yeah.
Three, two, one.